Guys, look who's here. Hi. Rome is here. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to finally meet you. I'm gonna tell them, listen, I was excited to bring her to barbecue. Completely didn't know she doesn't eat meat. I'm just like stuffing my face with barbecue chicken. She's eating like the tiniest salad ever. That's because you were so, <laughs> so excited. She texted me and she's like, have you ever heard of Brooks Barbecue? Who are the famous people that loved it? Uh, like Hillary Clinton, Rachel Ray. And I was like, we're gonna go. We'll go to barbecue, no big deal. Um, But I just felt so bad. And she brought me this shirt like, Stop, it's so cute. So for those of you that don't know, Ro also has a channel. I will leave it on the card up here, also in the description box below. But her husband is serving a 213 year prison sentence. Like, girl, Yeah. what the hell? Yeah. So I really wanna know a lot of questions. We have made a video before, but never in person. I will also leave that in the description box of this video. I was really tired when I made the interview. I have so many more questions for you. Okay. Um, so let's just tell someone, cause this could be the first video that they're watching of us, both of us. Who is Adam? Why did he get 213 years? How does that happen to someone? Did yeah. he kill somebody? No, he didn't kill anybody. <laughs> he didn't even honestly physically injure somebody. And I always feel the need to clarify that because mm -hmm. somebody kind of came at me one time at my channel and she said, well, it does cause a lot of injury emotionally when yeah. somebody does that. And that's absolutely true. And I always say he deserves to do time and he deserved to do a whole chunk of time, but 213 years for robberies where nobody was physically hurt doesn't really make sense. So he got eight years for his underlying crimes and then they enhanced him because he had a gun in his possession. It was in his pocket. It was not brandished, meaning he didn't show it. It wasn't discharged, meaning he didn't use it. But because of having that gun on him, he got an additional five years that had to run consecutive, meaning after those first eight years. And then for every charge after that, it was an additional 25 mm -hmm. and then an additional 25 all the way up until 213. So did Adam take a plea? Nope, he didn't take a plea. Uh, so if he had taken a plea, what would he have gotten? He could have gotten no time. He had co-defendants that took pleas and both of them got zero. Zero time. So did those co-defendants inform on the other people involved? Yes. So that is why he, he got no time. So basically Adam right now is still in prison for not snitching. Yep. So he has served almost, almost 20 years right? 19? Yep. 19, 19 and, and a half. half. Yep. So almost 20 years. And yes, he was wrong. hundred percent. He should have done time in prison. He was robbing people. He took their money. I totally get it. Go to prison. But 213 years, boy, bye. <laughs> no, yeah. that's crazy. So I feel so bad for you to have to go through that. You did nothing wrong. And you're so, you're so supportive of him. You're his biggest advocate. So can you talk a little bit about what your life looks like today being a prison wife? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's no different today than probably the average person. I get up, I go to work, I go to the gym. I just have a relationship over email and over the phone and in prison visit, which is very different. Obviously, I don't go to sleep next to my spouse, but that's not the way it is right now. I can tell you years ago, it was not like that. It was very painful. A lot of times, not only myself, but a lot of the prison wives and family members that I work with, I've been coaching them for many years put themselves in their own little prison. They yeah. feel sad all the time. They feel guilty almost celebrating and participating in life because their loved one is in a jail cell. So it took oh. me a really long time to be able to even celebrate on the holidays and say yes to parties and go to weddings. But once I did, I, I feel better. I feel like it's part of my life. It's not consuming of my life because I never want to let this system that pulled him from me, that ripped him away from me, for now, we always have hope that he'll be home one day, but I never want to let them win because I feel yeah. like at points, that's what it's set up to do. I just love you. Like, I oh, love your you. energy and I love how just fierce you are. Like, you are refusing to be miserable. You will be happy and you will make the best of a really shitty situation. Yeah. So let me back up just a little bit because I know people are gonna be asking all these questions. Can you explain a little bit as to why he got 213 years? He went he went to trial, yep. lost, but he, you usually hear of like people getting back-to-back -back life sentences yep. for killing someone yep. or multiple people. So why? what is the statute and how did he get sentenced to 213 years? Like, ugh. Yeah, so the statute itself, it's called 924C. And it was created to deter people in the, can I say the mafia? Mm -hmm. To deter people in the mafia. Back then when they created this law, 
they were robbing armored cars. They were robbing um, cars that were going from New Jersey to New York back and forth. They were taking money over state lines. So they created this law to get people to, to deter them from doing it and then also to get people to cooperate. So it's kind of like the government has this agenda and they wave this little carrot going, you could go to jail for life or you could cooperate with us. And Adam refused to do that. So basically, in a nutshell, that's what created the 213 years. And they stacked him. Yep. They stacked all of yep. the sentences. Yep. And oh they, that's what the law says. So you can't run it concurrently. You can't run that all on top of each other just to make a 25 year sentence. Yeah. Has to run one after another. And they do it on purpose to create these life sentences. And he's not the only one. There are about right. 3,000 people sentenced under that law. 3,000 people, yep. you guys, 3,000 people. And I know a lot of people on the internet, because it is the internet, they're like, oh, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime, or they belong in prison forever. You have to think about this, you guys. Were you wrong? Yes. Should your entire life be taken away? No, he didn't hurt anybody, and I get it. Emotionally, yes. Did he take money? Yes. Give him a 10-year sentence, make him pay restitution, yep. we're good. You know what I mean? It's not serving anyone to have Adam behind bars. So can you talk a little bit about what Adam is doing in prison right now? Yeah, so Adam is a life coach. He also coaches health and wellness. He runs fitness classes. He developed actually a coaching program for guys on the inside. They go through this, I believe it's 40 hours throughout a stretch of maybe six or nine months. They go through this course and then they actually get certified to become life coaches. When they get out, a lot of people are going to re-entry organizations or re-entry programs or the offices in their area and they're getting jobs and I can't say that they make this much money but a life coach out here can start potentially at hundred dollars an hour so it's a wonderful skill that he has and that he also has passed along to these people because it's really hard to re-enter and to get a job and to reintegrate and all of that mm -hmm. stuff especially after 20 years you know yeah. the, the world has changed so much in 20 years so I'm just so inspired by that because he could literally have given up mentally. Yeah. He could be in a gang. He could be doing all of the wrong things in prison. He made the choice, the conscious choice to do something positive with his time. You don't see that every day. Yeah. When you have a life sentence, it messes with your mind. And prison is really hard, you guys. Not saying that you're required to join a gang because you're not, but it's easier. Your life on the inside is easier when you're clicked up with people and you bang. That's for many reasons, whether it's drugs, money, protection, whatever it is, it's easier to run it in a group. So I'm just so surprised and I'm so encouraged by him. That's so amazing. Yeah. He actually called when we were at lunch and he sounds very different than his, than his I picture. I think so too. I <laughs> so think so funny. too. I always thought the same thing. No. Hopefully he will call back. Um, so I want you to talk just a little bit more about about how Adam would get out of prison now because there are certain things. So let's start with the appeal process. Has Adam appealed his case before? Yes, so there are three appeals in the federal system that are allowed to every inmate there. His were exhausted in 2005. And then in 20, it was silent. There was nothing that could have helped him get out until 2011. They introduced a bill that was specifically for this firearm statute. It came, it died, it, nothing. And then about a year later, they tried again. So it's kind of been this up and down, really high, high, really low, low roller coaster ever since 2011. Really ever since the appeals, but 2011 when it started to get a little more mainstream, people started to learn more about this crazy law. It's a mandatory minimum sentence, so it's that started becoming a catchphrase. Celebrities started to get involved. We applied for clemency back in 2016 with President Obama. We got word that the petition made it to the vice president's desk. So literally it was the next step would have been the president signing it. Yes, he had his bags packed. We were making plans for him to come home. And unfortunately we just ran out of time. There was a push, I think there were 10,000 petitions that were left and they were just sitting there. So that was probably the most excruciating thing that oh we've God. been through. Mm -hmm. He says worse than trial. Yeah. I would just be, like a couple days after, I would just be at work at my desk and just start crying. It's really emotional when you get that yeah. close and it's just ripped from you. So, but we never lost hope. And in April, a Supreme Court case came through that negated the terminology crime of violence within the statute he was sentenced under. So on the Hobbs Act that he was sentenced under, they attached this because that was considered a crime of violence. Well, the Supreme Court came in and said, that's too vague. So violence to you 
might mean something completely different than it means to me or anybody watching this. So now we're waiting for the circuit court to, because that was more of a directive, it uh -huh. wasn't set in stone. So we're waiting for the circuit court to give us approval for us to move forward with an appeal that we've had in since 2015. And then if, if that goes positive, it could be time served. But I'm really, really scared to get wrapped up in it. I try to keep the whole thing at arm's length and he kind of gets annoyed with me. Like you have to make plans. This could be any day, but I can't. Emotionally, I can't. Yeah, I couldn't either. You know, how, how do you stay so strong in all of this? I think that's the thing. I think I try to stay realistic. Mm -hmm. It's that whole cautiously optimistic thing. Mm -hmm. And then I just really grasp for the positive. You have yeah. to find the silver lining in things. And I'm really stubborn and I will not let this system win. I won't because that's what it's set up to do is to watch us fail and to rip us apart. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I, I just love you for that because I would be falling into pieces. I was a prison girlfriend um, a long time ago. I have been through many bids with Randy. Some of them we were together, some of them we weren't. As you guys know, we are not together anymore, but that was so hard on me. You know, I would get the calls. Sometimes we would fight. I'd hang up the phone or just leave the phone at the house or not answer. And that would drive him crazy. So it was very tense at times. And I just know from my experience, it is so hard. I couldn't go physically see him because I am a convicted felon and prisons are weird about it. I could see him in the county jail, but nothing after that. Um, and I just know my brief experience with that, like, oh my God, I would be falling to pieces. So I couldn't even imagine stick, sticking with Adam all these years. Like, I'm just so inspired by both of you. You're both so positive. You're both so encouraging. and. You really want to help other people and that is something that's like you're on fire but you want to put someone else out you know and yeah. that's that shows the kind of strength to me that i don't see every day so i just love you oh like, thank you I you guys you need too. to subscribe to her channel because she's Aww. she talks about so much over there that we don't have time to talk about today but she constantly keeps um her subscribers updated on adam sometimes he'll call or whatever it is she's very um she uploads very regularly so we we always know what's going on um, so he has exhausted all of his appeals. Yep. Right. So now we have to wait for someone to win with the 924C and Hobbs Act. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So once a case wins in the in the Supreme Court, then we can fight his case again. Yeah. Okay. That so that case won. So we're there. We okay. got that in April. So now we're just waiting because the Supreme Court didn't say yes, wash it. It's all gone. They put that back on the circuit courts. Okay. So now we have to wait for the circuit to say yes, you can move forward with this appeal, and then hopefully that means he could get time served. Yes. I mean, he's been in there for 20 years. Yeah. Like, how many more years do you want him to serve on robbery? Yeah. You know, it's it just makes me crazy because that could have very easily been me or some other people. I was running with the, a wrong crowd, but me today is very different than me seven years ago. So I can't even imagine how much he's grown and changed in 20 years. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because something you said before, I wanted to say this, Adam needed to go to jail. Jail yeah. saved his life. Mm -hmm. So I, it's just, it had to be like that. He, I never have once ever in all of these years have said, he didn't deserve this. Yeah. He is guilty, he deserved it. And he was doing awful things he needed to get in trouble but now he's a waste of taxpayer money at yeah this point. i just heard recently real. i think it's sixty thousand dollars to house an inmate a year it's on average it's like 33 to 60 depending on the prisoner the facility state fed privatized there's a lot of variables but it can range up upwards of sixty thousand dollars it's, it's just a waste of people's money yeah. where he could be a contributing member of society yeah, especially someone that's a certified life coach and he's he's paid his debt to society and I know when he walks out of that gate, which he's going to do, and I'm going to be there with cameras filming everything, but he's going to have a lot of adjusting to do. So has Adam ever talked to you about any fears that he has or goals that he has out, outside of prison, anything that he's you know afraid of or... He doesn't really talk to me about those fears. Okay. I think they're probably back there. I think I have more fears mm -hmm. about him coming out than he does. I think he just thinks he's gonna be okay, everything will be fine, and I get it. That's his coping, that's what he has to do. Yep. I'm afraid of just 
day-to-day integration back into life. Not, I've never once feared him going back to the street or right. doing breaking any laws or anything like that, but it's more the PTSD, the institutionalization. 20 years is a long time to live within that prison society. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, being in the store, he told me a story of this time when he did three years in the state before he caught this case. And he was in a grocery store and he was reaching up on a top shelf to get something and somebody walked by behind him that would never bother me or you or another person that didn't just get out of prison. But he flipped out. He had to go outside. At the time he was smoking, he had to smoke a cigarette, calm himself down. And so I think it's just those little things in the beginning. I relate so much to that because I, my last bid was two and a half years. And just coming home after two and a half years, I, I did not like my back being to anything. Like I had to see everything. So I didn't like my back facing people. I didn't like people walking behind me. I was not okay grocery shopping. I'm like, there's so many options. I'm used to ordering my commissary from a piece of paper, like checking if I want shrimp, beef, or chicken ramen noodles. Like you get three options. So I'm in the chip aisle and I'm like, why is there so many options? Like, I don't know what to get. I don't know what I like. I don't know how to cook. Like I was so, I was so intimidated by all the choices that we have. I didn't know what to wear. Jeans were not comfortable. I couldn't sleep. There were days where I would forget to eat because you're told, chow call, it's time to eat. And that's so dumb because when you're an inmate, all you're thinking about is food. Like, oh, I can't wait to get out to eat. You forget, like you literally forget when you're supposed to eat. So that to me was very difficult to adjust to. My first day in the halfway house, I didn't I didn't adjust the thermostat. I'm like, it's freezing in here. And the, the <laughs> other girl's like, the thermostat's right there. And I'm like, oh, thermostat. Like, I, I didn't know I could do that. Like, it's crazy. So when Adam comes home, he is gonna have to adjust to a lot of things. Will he be successful? I have no doubt. Yep. But I think emotionally for you both, it's gonna be a lot to adjust to. Yeah. Yep, I just spoke to a woman whose husband was a lifer in California and his sentence got overturned with that three strikes thing. Ugh. And she said that first year was really, really tough, but you year, just have to be you tenacious. You just have mm-hmm. to work through it together. And this is really cool. I had a subscriber tell me this one time, so anybody that has a loved one in prison who's watching this, she used to send her husband catalogs or she would take pictures at, let's say, a coffee shop or in, um, a convenience store and she would actually make him pick. She would send him options and say, if you were there, what pack of gum would you choose? If you were there, what cup of coffee would you choose? To kind of help break that early on. Yeah. I thought that was such a good good advice. That's genius yeah. because when I got out of prison last time, I didn't really know Starbucks orders, yeah. you know? So a friend took me through the drive through She's like, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't know, whatever whatever you have, I'll yeah. take one of yours because I had no idea and now I'm addicted to white chocolate mochas. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'll just get what you're having. You know, you, you don't want to tell people like, not only do I have no idea what this menu is, but I've never had it before. Like I drink kefi coffee in prison. Like, I don't know, there's one kind of coffee in prison. So yeah. it is a lot to get used to, but I have no doubt in my mind that Adam is going to get out and it's going to take time. You're both going to have to be really patient with each other, yeah. you know? And I know they're, you're, you're kind of a go, like you go, you work, you work out, you have your whole routine. So Adam's gonna have to adjust to your life and your yeah. routine. Is anything about that scary to you or do you worry that he's gonna be like, a lot of inmates don't like to be left alone. So are you worried that like leaving him at the house might cause him to be anxious? Have you thought about that in any way? No, I actually never knew that, but mm-hmm. I kind of am more anxious about, I don't have children. I come, I go, I do what I want, when I want. Right. And so I'm kind of anxious about integrating back into, him back into my life, because yeah. I think as a prison wife, I think a lot of us create this independent shell to help us get through it. It's a coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. So having somebody kind of knock that and break that shell, even though it's him, that's the person I've wanted there for so long and I know we'll be fine. It's just kind of in my head, it causes this weird anxiety I want it so bad but at the same time I'm like oh my god he's gonna be in my space it's crazy yeah he might be like where are you going yeah what are you doing you know and he doesn't mean anything by it right because you know he loves you but it's it is weird so even moving in with Reese that first year I was like like you're in my space I'm very independent I don't really like living with people (laughs) so I was afraid after Reese and I dated for a year and then moved in together like a normal couple it was like oh I don't want you in my space bro Adam's calling right now. Up 
since Roe is my guest. So we were just talking about your life on the outside and I kind of want to ask you um, if you're nervous to start a life with Roe or how you think you're going to cope with leaving prison after 20 years. Believe it or not, I am not nervous, not even in the slightest. Uh, you know, I was, I was thinking about this earlier today. She and I try and communicate everything to one another so that, you know, there's there's hopefully not going to be too many unforeseen things in the future. Uh, I'm excited about it. I, I know that there's, you know, it, it's going to be a change, but based on everything that, that we've built in our relationship over, you know, the, the last 10, 12, 10, 11 years, I mean, it's really, it all comes down to communication and, and uh, us being able to, to speak openly with one another. I'm, yeah, I'm not worried about any of the challenges that come up in that transition time at any time. Can I ask you to like yell? <laughs> can you like talk as loud as you can? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. No, it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm crammed into a phone booth right now oh, with no. four other guys. <laughs> so, yeah. You're I'll, crammed I'll into a phone booth with four guys? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the phone situation. Yeah. With no AC, I'm sure it's, with it's no, all good. With no air conditioning, too, right? With no AC. Nope. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so... <laughs> How do you stay so positive? Ro is, was telling us that you're a life coach. What does that look like for you, like on the day to day? How do you help people in there when you're serving a really crazy sentence? I mean, that takes this kind of strength that I don't even have. Let's call it from a federal prison. <laughs> That's a great question, especially with reminders like that of where I am. My all bad, the bro. Time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Listen, no, that's, that's a great question. Honestly, uh, Actually, what probably my greatest strength, what, what I have going for me, is I've been in the system now almost 20 years, so I not only have that experience, but when I tell people how much time, the time that I'm serving, and I tell them it's, you know, I got a 213 year sentence, it tends to grab people's attention, and for good or ill, they are going to give what I say more weight than you know, say the average person. And I've realized that with that comes comes a great responsibility. So, you know, based on my experiences, like I said, I got out, I did some time when I was younger, I did a few years, I, I thought that I had it all figured out. And as soon as I got out of prison, like everything fell apart. So, you know, part of what I feel, you know, a strong sense of purpose in here is to be able to, to share you know, the mistakes that I made and to let guys know that the reason why I do what I do now and to try and help other men develop like a, a full plan on what they want to do with their life based on what their strengths are, like what they enjoy doing. It shouldn't be about getting out and having to struggle and suffer and sacrifice. Like that doesn't sound like much fun to me. Like that sounds like prison. Yeah, so, literally. Literally, and everybody talks about getting out like being the cure, but it's not. So I, I take the time and invest in those individuals who want to try something different and help them work out a plan, you know, that speaks to their strength, that gets them on a, on a path focused on what they really want to do with their life. And that starts now. Like, we have all this time and opportunity while we're in here. Like, why not take full advantage of that? You know, a lifer kind of approached me. I was a celly with someone that had capital murder and I was a drug dealer. I was one mistake away from spending the rest of my life with her. And she kind of pulled me aside and she had the same mentality that you had. I was in such a hurry to get out, but I had no fucking idea what I was doing. You know, I just wanted to get back to the street, not thinking it through. And her taking that time to help me really made me realize like, you're here for a few more months. She lives here. You know, you need to listen to what she has to say. And I don't think if it wasn't for that conversation, 
I would have, I mean, it's hard to say what I would have done, but she really helped me understand like, little girl, you're one mistake away from pulling that trigger next time. You know, I was caught with drugs and guns and I'm very grateful for that. So the importance of what you do can't even be measured. I know that you're changing lives in there and I just am so encouraged by you. Um, I'm gonna leave your petition in the comment section down below. I want everyone to go sign it for you. My battery is going to die, but thank you so much for calling. I'm gonna hand you back to Ro. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. I, listen, I applaud what you are doing. What you're doing is amazing. I wish there was more people out there doing the same thing. Uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you hopefully at some, some point here in the very near future. Oh, I really appreciate that. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna show up at the prison with several cameras and we will record you walking out that gate. Here's Ro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold you to that. Hell yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> My word is good. Hey, Hi. thanks. Do you wanna call me later so we can finish the video? Yes, I will call you sometime tonight. Okay, love you. Uh, bye, bye, hubby. Bye. <laughs> I love him. Isn't he good? That was like the perfect ending to the video. Hopefully you guys heard what Adam had to say. I can't wait to interview him in person. He is so great. I just, oh, I love him. I love both of you. Oh, we love you too. So again, we're gonna pin the petition down below. Go sign it for Adam. Leave Adam and Rose some encouraging words and make sure you go subscribe to her because she will keep you updated on everything that is going on with Adam. And I can't wait to fly to Jersey to get that footage when Adam walks out the door. Give me a hug. Thank you so much of for coming course. on my Thank channel. Thank you so much for having me You again. guys, she drove four hours to see me. You're kind of a pit stop in between. Come I'm a pit stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, stay safe, stay sober. Don't rob anyone, because then you'll go meet Adam. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye